In this screencast, I want to talk about a problem called matrix chain multiplication. This problem has some applications in graphics and a few other application areas. It's best explained, I think, by looking at a simple example. Suppose we want to multiply uh, four matrices together, and they have dimensions 5 by 20, 20 by 1, etc. And we want to minimize the number of multiplications. There are two things that you need to recall that are important. One is that when you multiply two matrices uh, for a dimension, say dimensions n by m and m by p, okay, in, in this case, um, this matrix A would be n would be 5 and m would be 20. And if we were multiplying it by this matrix, um, m again would be 20 and p would be 1. The key thing here is that the uh, number of columns in the first matrix must equal the number of rows in the second matrix. And if we do that, the number of multiplications is going to be equal n times m times p, so the product of the three, basically the three dimensions. Because matrix multiplication is associative, that means we can multiply the matrices, grouping them in any way we want to. Want to and we'll still get the same answer. So for this example, when there are four matrices, there are five possible groupings. And you can see those here. Uh, here we multiply C times D first, then multiply by B, then finally multiply by A. Whereas here, we multiply B and C first, then we multiply that result by A, and then finally by D. The number of groupings grows exponentially um, actually quite faster than 2 to the n. So now I'd like to quickly review matrix multiplication just to remind everybody how it works and because it's so important that you understand how the dimensions play into the number of multiplications. So let's take a very simple example. Here's a 2 by 3 matrix. We're going to multiply it times a uh, 3 by 2 matrix. So we'll end up with a 2 by 2 matrix. That's shown over here. Here's the final result. And the way this works is, you can see the formula up here. Basically, we take a row, the first row, times the first column, term by term, and add those results all together to get the entry in the 1-1 one, one spot in the result. We take the first row times the second column. That gives us the result uh, for the first row, second column over here, etc. Okay. So as you can see, for each cell, we have to do m multiplications. In other words, the number of columns over here, which is equal to the number of rows. So we have to do m multiplications. And then we're going to have, we have to fill in um, n by p entries in the resulting matrix. So... Again, let me just reemphasize, the number of columns in the first matrix must equal the number of rows of the second matrix, and the number of multiplications is n times m times p. So carrying this example a step further, um, we'll now take this specific example, right, and we're going to compute the number of multiplications of a couple of the possibilities. So here's one of the possibilities. Multiply C times D first, then B, and then finally by A. So C times D, right, that's this matrix times this matrix. That's going to require 1,000 operations. 1 times 10 times 100. So that gives 1,000 ops. Um, and it ends up being a 1 by 100 matrix. Then when we multiply this by B, that means I'm going to have this 20 by 1 matrix multiplied by a 1 by 100 matrix, okay, shown here. And that's going to be another 2,000 operations. So, so far we've got 3,000 operations already. And now, finally, we have to multiply A times this whole result, result for that, okay. And what's that going to be? That's going to be 50 by 20 by 100. So 50 by 20 by 100, that turns out that that's going to be 100,000 operations. So 100,000 plus 2,000 
plus 1,000 gives 103,000 operations. If you carry out similar operations for the different ways to associate the matrices, you'll see you get these results. Notice the big, in this example, we have a big advantage to doing it the most efficient way, namely only 7,000 multiplications as opposed to 120,000 operations. Notice that to do, to compute all these numbers, there's a lot of overlap in the subproblems. So here, notice we have to compute C times D, how many operations that's going to require, and we also have to do it here, B times C here, B times C here. A times B in this one, A times B in this one. So that's exactly what dynamic programming is helps and can sometimes help us avoid is that overlap, overlapping subproblem. So we want to make sure when we think about the optimal substructure that what we're going to be able to do is eliminate that. And basically what you'll, the way we're going to do that is we're going to build things up one at a time and so that we don't have to recompute things. So for instance, we'll one of the first things we'll compute when we do the setup is we'll compute the pairwise part, the consecutive matrix products. So CD, BC, and AB. And we'll use those then to, um, so we'll only compute those once. Um, and similarly then when we have something like this where A is on the outside, so let's think about these, this problem, right? If in order for A to be computed, we need to know if we're going to try to find the smallest one, we need to find out the smallest way to compute B times C times D. And that might either be this subproblem or this subproblem. So that's exactly how we're going to proceed. So what is a reasonable subproblem? Well, basically it's some subset of these matrices uh, and how many operations they require and versus another subset of these matrices, so consecutive matrices. And then those will both be subproblems of the concatenation of that set. Okay? So we need some notation to make this a little clearer in the general sense. So what we're going to do is the dimensions of AI, so A1, first one, is going to be D0 times D1. Then for A2, because A2 has the same number of rows as A1 has columns, right? So A2 will be D1 times D2, etc. Okay, so you can see that down here. So A1 times A2 is going to require D0 times D1 times D2 operations. And in general, AK times AK plus 1 is going to require dk minus 1 times dk times dk plus 1. Okay, now, in order to set this up, we want to know the least number of multiplications to multiply the matrices from i to j. That way, if we have uh, matrices from i to j, and then matrices from j to k, we'll be able to compute the least number of multiplications needed to go from uh, i to j. We're going to need that for all k. So that's what this next line says. So this is worth t studying carefully. So mij, this is the number of multiplications of the matrices from i to j, to multiply those matrices, is going to be the minimum over k of the number of multiplications it takes to go from i to k, plus the number of multiplications it takes to k, k plus 1 to j, plus multiplying these two end, point, end, end matrices together. So di minus 1, dk, dj. And, that get, and this has got to be over all the indices k that split the problem. Okay, and you'll see that in the example that we're going to work through. The base case is one matrix, okay, and that requires zero multiplication. So here's the setup. Um, these are along the diagonal here. We have just individual one single matrix. So from 1 to 1, 2 to 2, 3 to 3. So that requires no multiplications. 
then it's this is going to be matrix one this entry will, will, what does this represent the minimum number of operations multiplications required to multiply matrix one times matrix two well there's no real minimum to take care of it what going to be what it is so for a1 uh, it's 30 by 35 a2 is 35 by 15 so 15 750 is the product of 30 times 35 times 15 that's a little hard to see but let's take an easier one how about 3 to 4 3 to 4 is going to be 15 times 5 times 10 well 15 times 5 is 75 times 10 is 750 an either even easier one to see is from 4 to 5 that's 5 times 10 times 20 and that's going to be 1000 so you can see these represent all the products of two consecutive matrices the number of multiplications required for those products okay now this these numbers sorry these these numbers these numbers represent what this is the matrices from 1 3, okay, and so this represents the minimum of either doing uh, A1 times A2 first and then multiplying by A3, or A2 times A3 first, that's this entry, and then multiplying by A1. So th these calculations go into the computing this one, and we'll see that in more detail in the next slide. So, let's compute M15. Let me remind you what this is. This is going to be the sum of all the, this is going to be all the multiplications required to multiply the matrices 1 through 5. Okay. Now, there are a lot of different ways to do that, okay? And we want to find the association that does the minimum number of multiplications. So let's suppose that we split between A2 and A3. Then, the number of multiplications to compute A1 by A2 times A2 is the entry in the 1-2 spot, and that's 15,750. The optimal split uh, for the, the matrices A3 through A5 is the entry that's in the 3-5 position in the matrix that we're uh, computing. And that's 2,500 multiplications. And then when you, now we want to compute, the final piece to compute is the number of multiplications required to, com to multiply A1 by A2 times A2, that quantity, times the matrix that is a result of A3 times A4 times A5. And that's going to be uh, 30 by 15 by 20. That's 9,000 operations. And the sum of these three things, 15, 750, 2,500, 9,000, that's equal to 27,250. Turns out that's not the minimum, but just wanted to go through the computation. If the split is between A3 and A4, then we use the entry in the 1, 3 spot. Okay, that's going to be the matrices A1, A2, A3. That's that. The cost of multiplying A4 plus times A5, that's the entry in the 4 fifth spot. That's 1,000. And then the product of these two, which is 30 times 5 times 20, that's 3,000. And the sum of these is 11,875, which is the minimum. No, I mean, we have to, you have to compute many more of these uh, to fill in that entry into the 1-5 position.